Above every water system, an invisible weight presses on the world below. It's called the barometric pressure, the weight of the sky itself. Most anglers have heard of barometric pressure, but does everyone really understand what it means? To the perch, the pike, and every other fish, it shapes every rise, every rest, and every feeding spell. This is the story of that hidden force and how the weather we feel becomes the world they live in. Air has mass. Every column of air above the earth adds weight to the surface below. And that weight is air pressure. We measure it in millibars or hectopascals. Two different names, but the same unit. At sea level, the global average is 1,013 millibars. Below that lies lighter air, low pressure, cloud and wind. Above it, heavier air, high pressure, stillness, clear skies. The atmosphere usually drifts between 980 and 1040 millibars. Tiny changes above us, yet enormous consequences below. High and low pressure, they're not random readings. They're born from movement in the atmosphere. Warm air rises and expands, leaving a column of lighter air, a low pressure system. Cool air sinks and compresses, packing more molecules into less space, a high pressure system. Where air rises, clouds form and winds develop. And where air sinks, the sky clears and the water stills. Every calm, every storm, and every breeze we feel on the bank is simply these two forces trading weight above the water. And when that balance shifts, the fish below feel it first. Inside every perch, pike, and even zander, lies a thin walled sack of gas, the swim bladder. It keeps them neutrally buoyant, able to hover without effort. But not all fish use it the same way. Carp, tench, and catfish belong to the physostomus group. Their bladder connects to the gut. They can gulp or release air at the surface, adjusting buoyancy in seconds. Predators such as perch, pike, and zander are physoclistus. Their bladder is sealed. They can't vent gas quickly. Instead, a web of blood vessels adds or removes gases slowly through the bloodstream. That makes them far more sensitive to the air above. When barometric pressure falls, the water's weight eases. The trapped gas expands, lifting the fish and reducing effort. When pressure rises, the gas compresses. The fish feels heavier, balance harder to hold, every movement costing more energy. This is the direct connection between sky and water, the atmosphere written into a predator's body. 1,030 millibars is standard sea level pressure. Drop towards 1,000 millibars or below, and a low pressure system is forming. Lighter air, unsettled weather. Rise beyond 1,020 millibars, and the air grows dense. A high pressure ridge, bright and calm. Now, fish don't know the numbers, but they sense the change. A fall of three to six millibars in a day is enough to expand the bladder and spark hormonal activity. Feeding usually peaks in the hours before the pressure bottoms out. 
the calm before the storm when physics and biology align. Now those readings are based on sea level pressure. At altitude the air is thinner, there's simply less of it above you. A lake 300 meters up might show 985 millibars on a normal settled day. That isn't low pressure, it's the local norm. What matters is the movement around the baseline. A drop from 985 to 978 in a mountain lock feels the same as 1013 to 1006 in the lowlands. As I said, the fish don't know the numbers, but they know the change. Now, pressure rarely acts alone. It moves with light, wind and oxygen. High pressure isn't bad, it's simply a cue to adjust. Go slower, deeper, more precise. Low pressure invites movement, midwater baits, searching retrieves like crankbaits, reaction strikes. Every system writes its own rule book and the adaptable angler reads them all. The real secret is direction. A gentle fall means buoyant fish and confidence building. A sharp rise means compression and caution. Even stable days hide tiny fluctuations. Morning warmth, evening cool. Each creating short feeding bursts. The barometer isn't fortune telling, it's translation. A way to understand how fish feel under the weight of the sky. It's said that high pressure kills the fishing, but that's not 100% accurate. It just changes the stage. Under bright, settled skies, predators feed shorter and deeper. Under cloud and falling pressure, they roam wider and longer. Pressure isn't good or bad, it's just context. Fish react to change, not to numbers on a screen. But then the nuance of the height of summer comes. 30 degrees in the air, the barometer high, and fish feeding all day. That's no contradiction. Warm weather, warm water, accelerates metabolism. Every heartbeat and muscle burns energy faster, even under heavy air. That need to eat outweighs the discomfort of pressure. After a few stable days, fish adapt. Their swim bladders rebalance to the weight of the sky. Feeding now depends on oxygen, shade and prey movement. Inflows, deep shelves and reed line shadows become comfort zones. Pressure still matters, but in summer, everything else matters more. The rule doesn't break, it just bends, shifted by the rhythm of the season. Every fish lives beneath an invisible sky, a sky that never stops moving. A rise brings calm, a fall brings motion. Pressure doesn't decide whether fish will feed, it decides how they feel when they do. The barometer on your wall doesn't measure luck, it measures the silent dialogue between air and water. Learn to read it and you'll see patterns that others miss. If you enjoyed this short documentary and learned something new, hit that subscribe button. There's plenty more predator science and wild water adventures coming soon. I'm Stu and this is Hooked on Predator Fishing. Until next time, stay hooked. I'm Stu, a British military veteran and predator angling runs deep in my veins. It's about wild waters, the chase and a way of life. If you enjoyed this adventure, hit subscribe. And if you want to go even further, join my channel memberships for raw, unfiltered predator sessions and exclusive films you won't see anywhere else. This is Hooked on Predator Fishing and until next time, stay hooked.